three children in the Reading Public Schools, including a son who has special needs. Raising a child with special needs is amazing. It's life-changing in all the best ways. And admittedly, it is sometimes challenging. Parents like myself, I think our greatest challenge is educating our children and ensuring their safety. Currently, my son's team at his school, his teachers, his therapist, his principal, they're very dedicated and they give him the best possible education that they can. My concern, if this override doesn't pass, is that they're not going to have sufficient funds enough to continue for my son and for all the children across our town. My son also has a medical condition that sometimes requires emergent care. For better or worse, our family is well known to the EMTs, firefighters, and police personnel in our town. They've come to his aid at school, at home, even last week to a school bus. I've always been extremely grateful for their professionalism and response. However, it is concerning to me that the population of this town continues to grow, yet the emergency personnel staffing has not. If this override doesn't pass, I really do worry about the safety and wellness of our community. I urge you to vote on April 3rd. Hello, my name is David Clark, and I'm the Deputy Chief of Police for the Reading Police Department. Police work has changed a lot since I've been on the job. Paperwork takes a lot longer than it used to. There's a lot more forms to fill out. In an average arrest, we used to take a half an hour 15, 20 years ago. Now it takes a couple hours. And the demand on our officers is higher and higher each time. The override would give us a significant boost in the police department. We're asking for five officers. And we're not asking for five additional officers. We're actually asking to replace one that we lost for retirement we never replaced, and four additional ones, one being a school resource officer. The school resource officer position is new for the town of Reading. We've had one in the high school for a long time now, but we're asking for a second one to go in primarily into the middle schools and to assist the main SRO with the elementary schools. Right now, the school resource officer's time is divided between all the schools in Reading. And our feeling is that a second school resource officer, primarily based in the middle school, but available to help out in the high schools and all the elementary schools would really allow the school resource officers to do more proactive things instead of just reactive right now. The department itself, we have some outstanding officers on the job and the demands are tough on us and we've been doing really well. But right now we're so busy and the cost of service have gone up, our responses to calls have gone up, that it's taking um, away from our ability to be proactive. We can't dedicate as much time to traffic stops, community policing, um, during the summers and good weathers, putting the mountain bikes out in the woods and along the parks. We just don't have the staffing for that anymore due to how the demands of doing the job on a daily basis are. So those additional officers would help us go back to being proactive, going back to doing traffic enforcement in the, on the side streets and in the community, and getting back out there and getting in touch with the community, maybe even having a person out in the square during the summer and spring, talking to the business people, talking to the residents. It allows us that chance to kind of connect back with the community, whereas right now, honestly, we're just being reactive. We're going from call to call to call, and as the calls increase and our staffing doesn't, we don't, can't dedicate as much time to the people as we need to, and we see sometimes a rush to jump from call to call to call, then the officers are in the station the rest of the time doing reports. Additional officers allow us to kind of spread the calls out, spend more thorough time on the calls, and allow us to do, again, like I said, more proactive policing. During the summer months when vacations, people trying to take off, be with their families, we've had incidents where we're actually ordering officers in from home. And uh, people are on the days off being ordered in and held over for 16-hour shifts because we have to keep the staffing up and the officers are getting kind of burnt out with the amount of shifts they have to work. And it would allow us to just kind of get refreshed and, again, give back to the community that has done so much for all of us. Hello, my name is Jessica Skian. I'm here tonight to urge you to vote yes April 3rd in the override for our town and our schools. I speak to you as a parent of school-aged children, as the spouse of a Reading teacher, and as a Spanish teacher myself for the past 19 years. My children so far have enjoyed and thrived in their years in Reading. My son is now poised to start seventh grade. It's been difficult these past few months to imagine what his educational experience will be like if, these, if the schools have to make these cuts. His class is already one of the largest at Coolidge. He is looking forward to starting a language next year, 
and experiencing a school day that allows for academic thought and cultural and artistic subjects. Without this override passing, that will not be possible. My husband has been teaching at Reading since 2007. He has seen his class sizes balloon to classes as large as 33 students. Budget cuts have severely affected the high school over the past five years, and those were years that the town did not even offer or propose an override. His teaching experience has diverged from mine over the years just based on the fact that we teach in towns that have different approaches to overrides. As a language teacher myself, I know that if Reading students miss out on middle school language, this will set them up for a very different high school experience. These cuts will destroy the ability for students to take five years of a language and will decimate AP language programs at the high school. Dismantle the opportunity and take away any chance of second language proficiency. Cultural awareness and knowledge of another language set students on the path to becoming effective members of a global society. We have lived in Reading for the past 13 years. Our neighborhood reflects all the backgrounds and differences this town has to offer. I understand the needs of my neighbors. A town functions best when all the needs of the residents are met. This override for police and fire and schools will provide that. Hi, I'm Joanne King. My family and I moved to this town in 2006, and my youngest two children graduated from Reading Memorial High School. And they had the opportunity to take some higher level courses and to be in classes with fewer students. Without an override and more support for our schools, students today are not going to have the opportunity to take those high level courses because we're not going to have enough teachers to teach them. In addition, your students could be in classes with as many students as 30 or 40 in a class. This is not an optimal learning environment for our kids. They deserve better. We need to be thinking about Reading Memorial High School as our flagship school. It should provide the best opportunity for all of our students. I'm also a resident of this town. And moving here, we focus on safety and support for our citizens. In looking at the services that our firefighters and police offer, they've been working really hard and doing a tremendous job. However, they're using the same number of resources that they used in the 1960s, when the population was around 19,000, and today it's over 25,000. Hi, my name is Hubert James, and this is my wife, Emily. We've moved here about three and a half years ago now. We have three young children. Our son will be entering kindergarten in the fall at Joshua Eaton. We have a three-year-old daughter, and then we have a 10-week-old son as well. So why did we move to Reading? Um, as Hubert mentioned, it was three and a half years ago. We were looking for a community that was close in proximity to Boston. Both of us work in the city. Um, we were coming from a community that had a very walkable downtown, and so we're looking for um, a, a home in an area where we could easily walk into the center, which we do quite often, especially in the summer. And then I think it was probably the schools. The schools, yes. Yeah, so, so I think a, a big, another big factor for us was uh, the school system. So uh, both Emily and I are products of the public school system, and. Um, we, th we thought that that was really important to ensure that our kids, you know, to prepare our kids for the, the best future that possible. Um, um, and then not only that, once they've, once they've gone off and, and left school, um, I think for the same reasons that we are drawn to a community like Reading, um, others will be, and, and that ties directly to um, property values. So um, school systems does a lot for your, your kids when they're in them, but, but also um, even after that uh, for raising the property values or at least maintaining them. Uh, we want our schools to continue to be very strong, um, but we're also supporting it because we do so much within the community. Um, you know, we take advantage of the playgrounds, we take advantage of the library, we again love everything that the downtown has to offer, and so we know that, you know, a, a yes vote for the override will continue to keep all of those things strong. Um, but then also, equally important, in three and a half years, we have um, called 911 three times, and we have had the Reading Fire Department at our door within five minutes, and that is something that you know, we certainly don't take for granted, and we want to make sure in the event that we need to call them again, um, they are there and ready and fully staffed to be able to provide us that same level of service. 
and and on on top of those that are kind of right there, you know, police and fire. I'm sure there are other municipal services that we're not even thinking about that we take for granted. Um, you know, the trash and, and and things like that. That um, without them, we we definitely feel and 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 see the loss. Um, and so we've got to do what we can to um, maintain that level of service. Hello, <clears throat> my name is Russ Graham, and for the last. 37 years I have been involved in various parts of Reading Town Government, from the Finance Committee to Selectmen, to the school, to the library. Through that time, I have learned one thing. The people who live in Reading love this town. In the end, whenever we question what we want to do, whether it be the budget, whether it be zoning, the essential question what kind of town do we want to be? I think when our service to our senior citizens are not meeting their growing needs, that is not the kind of town we want to be. Courses, important courses in our school system, and the personnel who are the backbone of education are at risk. A risk directly affecting our ability to provide a proper and superior education to our children. I feel strongly that that is not the kind of town we want to be. We did not become the kind of town we are because someone wished it so. We became so because we had people willing to give a commitment to their community. These needs that we need to meet make us the kind of town we do want to be. I think all of us <clears throat> desire to keep Reading, Reading. To do so requires that commitment. That commitment must include the needs to fund our town needs the economic needs that we have. It requires us to face the reality. We simply need more money to sustain that standard of excellence. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Pelusi. I am a Reading High graduate. I am a resident of Reading, and I'm also a special education teacher at Woodend Elementary School. To me, a passing override means consistency for my students and consistency for my teaching. It means having a consistent team chair to provide me with timely and meaningful feedback so that I can be the best teacher I can be. It also means consistency for my students. It means higher wages to pay and retain teachers so that we can do a better job of building our in-district programs and keeping students in-district with their peers. So hi, I'm Evan Robinson Johnson. I'm a senior at Reading Memorial High School, and I'll talk about why I think, uh, I think people should vote yes um, for the override for Reading. Um, so the, the first thing for me has been the foreign language department at Reading has been totally transformative to my education and my experience overall in the Reading schools. I've been able, with my learning, um, I've, I've taken French for the past six years through the program, and it's enabled me to go to France on an exchange trip, and working over the summer, I worked close to, um, close to Quebec province and had French-speaking customers come in all the time, and just being able to talk to them and even to talk to my other classmates uh, in a foreign language is just um, su such a unique uh, opportunity that I can't imagine new students coming to the high school without. It's such a cultural exchange that, w that we're able to have because of those classes. Um, so I, I definitely would love to see that continue in Reading, and I think it's something that's been super valuable for my education um, and others, too. The second thing I would say is that um, with, the, with, with more cuts, that would mean an increased pressure on classes in school. Uh, for, for me personally, I'm taking four AP classes this year, 
and those AP classes are all offered only once during the day. There's only one AP French class, for example, only one calculus class, only one uh, physics class, and we're all uh, forced into those classes together because we're the ones who want to take it at the highest level, but there's only one teacher to teach it and only one block during the day. So what it's meant for me is I've, I've had to give up band classes and chorus classes and some other art electives that I wanted to take just because they're only, you can only have those classes at a specific time during the day. Um, so it, it's, it's just made it hard to take the classes I want. It even meant I couldn't take an AP history class, um, which to me was something that was going to be a no-brainer. You know, of course I want to take a uh, government class, but I wasn't able to because of the scheduling. Um, and I think, it, I think it's been hard for other students because a lot of my students have been, for, a lot of my friends have been forced to, um, to join classes online, to take classes online or privately with the teacher. And that just puts more stress on, on an already busy with uh, AP classes and already busy schedule. And especially for students who are struggling, uh, when, when the budget cuts uh, come and those, those classes grow even larger, it becomes even harder for students to seek extra time with teachers and extra help that they might need, um, just due to the sheer size and number of the people in those classes. For instance, there's 30, 30 plus people in my calculus class right now, and to try to come for extra help in the morning is just, uh, you know, every, everyone wants their time with the teacher, but with a class like that, it's, it's really tough, and I know, um, I know personally people who have uh, had, had trouble and have actually dropped down levels in terms of classes just um, to deal with, to deal with the, uh, to, or to try to give themselves more time and more uh, chance to, to meet with teachers just because some of, the, some of the smaller classes are in those lower levels. Hello, my name is Julie Merrill. I'm a Reading resident, and I have been a teacher at Parker Middle School for the last 10 years. I'm very fortunate to be part of a wonderful community of educators, to work with awesome kids and also very supportive parents. However, with the steep budget cuts that we're facing, I'm fearful that the middle school model may be changing drastically. Currently, sixth graders are scheduled into a literacy block each day where they have two periods to continue to build those foundational reading and writing skills. If the override does not pass, the number of teachers will be reduced, which means that student instruction time in English will be cut in half. This also means that those teachers servicing the sixth graders will have double the amount of students that they have right now. This leads to concerns with identifying struggling learners, forming those essential personal connections, especially at the start of middle school, and just building that sense of community. In addition, the middle school could face eliminating the foreign language department completely. This is something that students look forward to all through their sixth grade year. It helps build vocabulary skills, grammar skills, cultural knowledge, and just prepares them for overall readiness as members of a global society. The middle schools in total could possibly lose seven teachers. This means seven less adults working with our adolescents at an age where guidance and mentorship is so pivotal. A yes vote for Reading on April 3rd means a yes vote for the future of our students and keeping our town as a strong community and support system for all of our citizens. Thank you. Hi, I'm Fire Chief Greg Burns, and I'd like to talk a little bit tonight about what the Reading Fire Department does. We have four major functions. We do fire suppression. We provide the emergency medical transportation and treatment for the community. We provide fire prevention services and emergency management services for the town of Reading. Right now, the department's staffed with 47 personnel, and we are primarily organized around four groups of 11 firefighters. Each day, each, each group staffs two engines, a ladder truck, and an ambulance. What we've seen over the last uh, 20 years or so is an increase to our responses, primarily on the emergency medical side. So if we looked at our statistics from 1987 to now, we've seen that our EMS responsive responses have increased almost 1,000 per year.
Last year, the Reading Fire Department, we did a study of uh, comparable communities to look at our staffing levels, and we compared it to 25 communities identified by the Finance Committee as comparable communities to Reading. In all of those communities, we received data back from 24 of them, and we asked the communities a number of questions, what their population was, how many firefighters they have, what their salary figures are for the community, what their responses are, and a number of other factors. And what we found was that Reading compares to our comparable communities, then our population is on the higher side and our staffing level is on the lower side. We looked at our number of supervisors compared to other communities, we're on the lower side there as well. Uh, same with our overtime expenditures was on the slightly lower side. One of the things that makes Reading unique to the other fire departments is that not all of them provide emergency medical services. We provide emergency medical services at the advanced life support level, and that causes some extra costs for the community, but in return, we provide a much higher level of services. All our firefighters that are paramedics, they're able to give a wide range of medications right in people's homes when they're sick. We've also done a num another step to increase the the level of EMS services we provide. We've registered all our first line fire apparatus, our two engines and ladder trucks, as class five ambulances. That lets us carry medications. So when our ambulance is out, we can provide life-saving care to somebody who's sick or injured. We looked at uh, Walker's Book, the Walker's Book Drive uh, development. We looked at Reading Woods. We looked at Reading Commons. And we also looked at the development on Haven Street and others, and what we found was that that was 10% of our responses in 2016. Going forward, we know we're going to have a number of large projects coming in on Prescott Street and Lincoln Street, on uh, Haven Street at the uh, post office site, also on Gould Street, and also on Lake, Lakeview Avenue. So we know as our population increases, that results in additional responses for us. So we, we see Reading growing and we see that demand for our services will continue to grow. In closing, what we've seen in Reading is our population on the increase and we see our call volume also on the increase. And we know that as these large developments get built out, we know we're going to have additional calls as a result of that. So the additional staffing, if we're fortunate enough to receive the additional staffing, that will help us get to the median level of the comparable communities and help us provide a better service to the community. Thank you. Hi, my name is Steve Peacock and I'm a Reading resident since 1996. I would first of all want to thank everybody for their hard work on the YES campaign. It is something that's very important to me and my family and one of the reasons that we moved to Reading in the first place. We were very attracted to Reading because of the schools, the uh, location and proximity to Boston, the public services, and the town center, the interesting stanchion and all. Uh, over the last uh, 20 years, we have benefited from everything that Reading has to offer, utilizing on a few occasions uh, the fire department uh, and certainly Anytime you have to uh, call for public safety, you want folks to arrive immediately, which in both cases they did, and thankfully they were not emergencies, but it was certainly great to know that if we needed help, people would be there soon. And also, we had a uh, false alarm uh, with an alarm where the police came, and, and fortunately the balloons that set it off uh, did not cause any harm. But in any event, uh, it really made me realize that we take a lot of these services for granted. And it's very important that when we need these services, they are available to all of us. Uh, no more is that true in terms of the education as well. All three of uh, my kids have been through the Reading Public Schools and have had wonderful experiences and incredible teachers guiding them along the way. Uh, which includes a lot of the uh, course load that uh, currently is uh, potentially uh, on the block as a result of some funding issues. So I certainly encourage everybody to look at 
uh, Reading not just from uh, the perspective of the uh, services that are provided, but also the experiences that we get. And I know that my family, my kids, we are all tremendously uh, better off for those services and really feel strongly that continuing to invest in Reading will continue to make Reading a great place to live, to work, and to shop. It has so much to offer for all of us. And I think that if we continue to invest in it, just like on the sports fields or uh, in the classroom, those investments will pay off in dividends. Uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but I think it's important to note that both the Performing Arts Center and all of the fields around Reading, uh, particularly the high school complex, are really the crown jewel. And, and also very important in our decision to move to Reading and to stay into Reading. And talking to local residents, one of the reasons that people are very excited about Reading is that you can really develop the entire child, whether it is on those sports fields, whether it is in those academic classrooms, or whether it's in the performing arts centers. Those are all incredible facilities that are not available in all towns, and it's something that we really uh, benefit uh, from tremendously. I've also uh, coached a number of sports teams, and uh, my children have played baseball, have played softball, they've played basketball down at the uh, field house, and it's wonderful to see those facilities used as much as they are, uh, and it is a really great experience for all of them. And what I tell uh, the kids when I'm coaching them all the time is you get out of it what you put into it. So with this override, I kind of echo the same sentiment, which is if we continue to invest in the town, and continue to invest in public safety, continue to invest in our education, we will all be much uh, better off for it, and Reading will become an even greater place and an even stronger town than it is today. Thank you. Let us join on equal third and vote yes for Reading. Let's continue that commitment. Let's keep Reading, Reading. Thank you. It's very important to me and should be to you that, that you go out and vote um, and vote yes to, to save some of, these, some of these programs at the high school. And I, I will be voting yes and I hope you will be too. So we hope you'll join us on April 3rd in, 3rd in voting yes for Reading. Thank you. Thank you. Please vote yes on April 3rd and let Reading be the best town that it can. Thank you. We need you to come out and vote. We need you to vote yes.